what it do. I'm Tracy G, a wellness artist, Sway in the Morning co-host. I'm also someone who is hella delighted to be in service of y'all through a conversation that is going to help us navigate emotionally, also professionally, the pursuits of many passions. And I'm willing to bet that you are a creative who is probably allergic to singularity, which means that you have a high value when it comes to variety. And you don't necessarily want to like plant this one very specific individual seed to then reap this one very specific individual piece of fruit, right? You're looking for a whole damn garden. And I understand. And I also understand that this blessing of being a multi-hyphenate can get tricky. Because when you have a vision that is so wide, it's like, where are the directions to go in all these places? Like, do they have a map that could take me not from A to B, but to A and B and C and D and E? But someone who is going to help us create that map, let me tell you, we got hooked up, CultureCon pulled through, um, Great Goose pulled through, and uh, Alignment pulled through with the most ideal human, I think, to share his perspective and to share his experiences because he is the king of multis. He is multidimensional. He is multidisciplined. I would also say he's multisensory because of the ways we've experienced him uh, through television, through film, through his poetry, through his music. I've been around him a number of times, and he also smells good. So through his fragrances, ay, ay, ay. This man, I can honestly say through all the dialogue I've had with him throughout the years, his heart dazzles as much as his mind. And so I'm very blessed to have the star right now of Netflix's Army of the Dead, Omari Hardwick. Hello, my friend. It's been a while. It has been. Your energy is very vibrant, though. Well, wow, because you know what, Trace? <laughs> I just landed. Yeah, from I where? Did. Uh, South Florida. Uh, An oh, undisclosed wait. spot in South Florida. You live in Miami, though, right? Yep, right outside of Miami. Okay, I didn't know if those were rumors or not. Oh, no, no, no. I'm That's a good there. place to be for lockdown. You know what's interesting? A lot of people said that Miami was going to become, or at least surrounding areas, were going to become the spot during COVID, and I think they were right. Oh, my god. Because New York went kind of ghost townish. Uh huh, no pun. No pun. <laughs> or pun. You or choose. pun. <laughs> Choose your own adventure with the puns. <laughs> punny, punny, punny. Yeah. But yeah, so for you to say I'm vibrant, that's a good thing because yeah. I am. Obviously, as you know, I'm always raspy voice, but I'm trying to not be as raspy for you. I appreciate okay? that. If so, you had yeah. to like give your your current mood a color, what would it be? Look at On you. the vibrancy scale. Look at you. You know, I'm just playing with your imagination. Cranberry. Burgundy. Oh! Burgundy. Cranberry. What does that not, represent? Not quite red. Not quite... You know, not quite red. Uh, perhaps it represents, I think we're always upon the shoulders of our ancestors, you know? So I don't think we can do anything in life without first and foremost honoring them. Mm. So maybe it's the, uh, the sangre, right? Mm. The deepening of the blood that they've left for us to enrich ourselves and our future in and with. And, uh, and also there's a sexiness to it, you know? Yes, Shout outs to TLC. Hello. Red light special. <laughs> First my of all, girls. this is such like evidence what? of what I laid out in my intro of you with just all your many layers mm. because you took us and I'm not sure what your sun sign is or what your moon or what your rising. You know, I'm a I Scorpio. I think I know him, so I'll tell you, you are Scorpio. I'll yes. do that. So um, my, you know, I'm a, I'm a, a Capricorn. Ah. And then uh, Aquarius rising. Okay. My moon is that of a Leo, which Ooh. is my mood, correct? This makes sense with the is entry that, into Hollywood. What, what is the world? What, what is the world of moon? Sexuality, passion, and, and, and anger? Well, emotion? moon is like your feminine energy. Okay. How you are more privately, how you are in intimate settings, things of that nature. I would also probably bring in some creativity okay. in that arena. And then rising is how we see ourselves. Exacto mundo. The world sees our zodiac sign. Mm -hmm. Yep, our sun sign. Our sun sign. But we see ourselves as our rising. Mm -hmm. So I'm an Aquarius rising, which ah. would explain the creativity as well. Yeah. I think. But I don't know. There's a lot of Capricorns that are pretty 
creative. I mean, Dr. King included, right? Mm -hmm. For sure, LeBron. Oh, yeah. And Capricorns are very, I I would say, like, anchored. But it's interesting the way you brought up how, like, for your rising, that's how you see yourself, and then your son, for how everyone else sees you. Am I right? I think I'm... Is that what yeah, 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 okay. yeah. No, I'm with you with that. Okay. I like that you laid it out because it made it real simple. And yeah. I also feel like it plays into our conversation now because when it comes to multi-hyphenate creatives, a lot of people want to see you in only one way. And we were speaking about <laughs> off camera. Yup, I'm playing with my segues, buddy. You see it. <laughs> and That's we the Scorpio. Speaking, uh-huh. Along quick, with, quick you Quick know, tongue. <laughs> you being quick a student of Sway Galloway. Yeah, that's true. And yeah. I was thinking about, too, how off camera, me and you were having a conversation, how it feels like it's our duty to our lineage to explore, to celebrate, mm. to manifest mm. all the many versions of ourselves. Because our past, when it comes to our ancestors, they were forced to just be one. That's it. That's it. Be seen as one and to move as one mm-hmm. instead of just like marching to their own mm-hmm. innate beat. Mm-hmm. And going to your Instagram, I don't know if I'm thinking too much on this. I'm going to bet on myself and say I'm not thinking too deeply into this. Go ahead, But sister. when it comes to identities, I thought it was interesting, like, the order, because it's Omari Hardwick, and I believe it begins with artists, mm. poets, activists, actors. Actors last. And everyone, <laughs> so going back to the sun sign, you with me? Mm. The majority of people would probably rearrange that order mm. and put actor first. Sure. And I just thought that was so interesting that of all the different directions you move in, that would, just talk to me about that order. First and foremost, okay. I'll say this to Sway. I'll look at one of these cameras and say it to Sway, that girl goo. <laughs> that girl goo. She goo goo. Oh, I love it. <laughs> um, it's a beautiful way to sort of introduce um, in a non, for me to receive it, yeah. Tracy, in a non pretentious way, which is how you and I are built. It's why Sway and I are so close. Um, the dichotomy, because it's amazing. So, to your point about the adjectives that I might lay out in the description of myself, um, in knowing that. Our, we're, we're raised in a black community, and black communities are get on first base. Mm-hmm. If it was analogous to baseball, which is probably the sport we could get more of a visual or give a visual to your great point using baseball. is probably more apropos. Get on first base, stay on first base. Don't dare try to go to second. Right. And if you do go to second base, your, your, your family's like, ah, while you're in route. Um, I didn't grow up like that. Mm-hmm. And I grew up in the space of a father saying, he did that. And don't apologize for how great you were at doing that. Mm -hmm. And Tracy, my mom would go, all praise due to God. Hmm. And it wasn't a bad mix. I just think, you know, always big team, little I as a personality. Mm -hmm. And I know that my position as the little eye to the big team is a freaking big position. So it just makes more sense to to make my first moniker, um, well, this is who I am. Because yeah. I know who I am, and God would have never made me an actor. Right. What is that? Huh. What is an actor? Huh. What is an actor? You tell me. Say, so I'm still trying to figure <laughs> that out. Wow. Which is probably why people are, you know, like, wow, he's such a freaking good actor. Because I don't know what it is. <laughs> So what is an artist? Man, an artist is an incredible storyteller of so many different formats and fashions. And we're an incredible, beautiful array of storyteller ourselves to the point where Dapper Dan is not only vouched for by the young Aesop Rockies who rock around him, but Tommy Hilfiger and Ralph Lauren don't exist without blackness. Say it loud. The reason that I can confidently say I'm still trying to figure out what an actor is is because I never thought that as an artist, storyteller, poet, musician, which all was my base foundation, acting was so much later for me. Right. The world saw it as first, but that's not what my reality was. I, yeah. I, I'm, not trying to, I'm not trying to connect with music or poetry for the first time. Mm-hmm. I'm often trying to reconnect with that which was the first time. Yes. 
Acting was the last time. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's always been a uh, thing to not think of myself as an artist first, because I think you guys would get a very different artist. Yeah. An actor is, is, is something of a, a branch to me. And I, yeah. my branches are poetry and activism and, and, and acting. And uh, I think they're all of use by God for me to be, to be reaching out. They're community outreach projects. Ghost, mm -hmm. Ghost to me was a community outreach project. Mm. So what I'm thinking about is the kid who is on the skateboard and they're seeing their life like as if it's a kaleidoscope, right? But then they're also reading a personal development book or they're going online and seeing like a business meme that says you have to choose one lane. You have to zero in on a single focus. But they're like, my natural lens is wide. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. So know what you mean. <laughs> Shit, what, what would you tell him or her? Today? I would tell him, I would tell him first and foremost, uh, an ego has to fly. Mm. They, they, they really, they're dead when they don't fly. There are definite birds that you and I have seen, pigeons included, where we go to the park, local park, what have you, any respective city, and I go, Trace, that bird, and you go, ah, oh, sad, leg, hurt, broke, whatever, wing not flapping the way it should. And they still kind of operate, but an eagle. Mm. It doesn't work for them. If they're anywhere below their flight, which is such at a height, that as you know, crows yep. keep trying to come at them and peck them the whole way. And the eagle is actually not bothered by the crow. He almost blesses, he or she almost blesses the crow mm -hmm. and continues to fly. So I would say to every, especially brown or black kid, I would say, if you're an eagle, you're an eagle. Eagles can't fly with seagulls. It doesn't work. This is very so true. It's, it's very difficult to go to your maker when it's all said and done and your maker goes, now how did it go? What, what, life? Did you do, how did you love? I think I love pretty good. Did you, okay, this is the list of people you love, you like, and this is the list of people you respect it. Oh, it's an interesting list of people that you respect. They're like mighty for people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I respect these people, God. Why do you respect them? Oh, man. <sighs> they flap. <laughs> In like every lane possible, God. Uh-huh. You respect that? Yeah, absolutely. Hmm. But I'm looking at your litany of things you did, and you flap just right here. Mm. Yep. You respect them, dear lad, because I made you. We never had any examples not true mm -hmm. we had so many examples and sometimes your intuition is speaking to you the example that's going to play out in real life for, you I, being, I think I you think being the example for sure yeah I think that yeah. the modern day construct of hate has a lot to do with damn it you big person being so big now you're making me have to be reminded that I'm actually made big <laughs> Right. How dare you, Omari, play more than Ghost? Mm. Well, first of all, Ghost was 30 people in one. Hello. So he was massive. Yeah. Okay, how dare you be more massive than Ghost? But I couldn't play him if I wasn't bigger than Ghost. Mm. Damn it, oh. That then makes us look in the mirror, and we all have to wake up and actually do work. Yeah. <laughs> the hashtag generation is interesting. I'm so proud of the young people behind the cameras because they're of that generation, but they're yeah. not of the hashtag. Mm -hmm. Hashtag grinding it. all day. You and I would go, work? What is grinding all day? Oh, we just yeah. called it work. Well, that's a whole other thing because what's interesting that- So it's interesting, right? That you mentioned work because I think it's only in recent years that we are welcoming rest into our hustle, you understand? Sure, and sure. like I've always been reminded of this, and sometimes I didn't pay attention to the metaphor God was laying out for me, but when you go to the gym and when you train, you know that sleep as, as much as, is as much if a part more. of the muscle, right, if not more. Like stretching before, stretching afterwards, like these things are but so necessary. But only trace if you work in your way of working. Mm. Well, how does rest work for you? And did you always know no, I mean, that it was a member of your team? <laughs> did you always know rest was a member of your winning team? Or did you deny it? I think that I knew it was 
but I think I do have an instinct of always, I am aware that young, particularly black kids are always looking at me. I'm never not aware of it. Mm. So I think a lot of times there is this massive push to work even more so that they can change that definition, not the rest part of the conversation, so that they could change the definition of, of what they deem work. That's okay. what I mean about hashtag grinding all day. For us, that's work. Grinding all day, if we follow people who say that, and I'm, 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 I'm believing that, again, some of you know our dear brethren and sistren behind the camera right now, I think that younger than me, I think that they would say it's true. What Omari defines as work is nine characters while playing the most complex character in TV history. Mm -hmm. I don't think Jimmy Gandolfini was more complex than, than Ghost. I don't think. I mean, he's a part of a very small huddle, right, of, of that which we've never seen. He's almost a superhero as a crack distributor. That's mm -hmm. crazy. Mm -hmm. So I'm always trying to remind folks my definition of work is a whole nother definition. So when I hear people claiming to be of work, and I don't deem it necessarily much to anything yeah. except doing what you're supposed to do. Yeah. But not at that level where I'm like, whoa, you got me turning around mm -hmm. and looking at your work. Then I think at times I would, I would throw rest to the side, almost to lovingly go, this is work. Right. D do I take on four characters in season three or three characters it was? It was a boy, girl, a dream. It was... It was shot caller. It was sorry to bother you. Mm -hmm. It was it was, you know, whatever other movie I had. Will Gardner. There was like four movies one summer after playing Ghost, and then I went right back to Ghost. Like, am I doing that just to prove to our community? No, nah, this is work. No, but I think subconsciously, I'm trying to prove to the world, and in the earthly form, I want to get as much art and storytelling and yeah. work out as I can, so that people can build upon that. And I guess that goes back to just self-awareness like understanding what season you're in and also understanding that we are not all copy and paste versions of ourselves Truly. of each other like Truly. we really live in an ecosystem where you know going back to the analogy that when you use the animals like an eagle is no better than an ant. No. They're very different and no. they all are necessary. So necessary. And so and so Seagull included. Yeah. They and just so, don't fly together. Right. But not right. better than each other. Exactly. I don't I don't look at things in like hierarchy anymore. It's just things are different. Very smart of you. You know what I mean? It's either you know, someone feels more inclined to move to the left, someone feels more inclined to move to the right, someone feels more inclined to be in the middle, but we're actually all on the same even line. Maybe speak on that, but you're doing such a great job on that one, Tracy. Who is the competition? I think the competition is white America, the society that already told you the limited amount of wins you may. So we were just talking oh, yeah, about, yeah, yeah, you know, cast sure. from Isabel Wilkerson. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You Shout know what out I mean? There's competition of Shout just like peers. Book. I mean, we, we also just create a, a culture of it. We, we are very comfortable with our cafeteria table. And you would say, well, who's not, Amari? Absolutely. Clueless is an interesting movie. Mm. <laughs> Clueless was very interesting. <laughs> None of us have a clue. There was an interesting movie. It totally looks different if it's a black cast. Mm. I wonder, do you personally have, because there's so many different lanes that mm -hmm. you occupy, mm. do you have like a rubric that helps you decide if something is an opportunity or if something is a distraction. How do you say no to something? When do you say no? When do you say yes? Like, what are some of the questions Omari asks Omari to decide, oh, snap, this was a distraction in disguise and that bitch was sexy. Mm. <laughs> I almost fell for that. Damn, Trace. Then I'll answer your dope ass question, Trace, by saying, I use help and I subconsciously delegate, delegate, delicately delegate, <laughs> very, I think, very sharp, better antennas at times than me, because mm. I'm such a mix of all over the placeness and, and a nut and a juggernaut of energy, as Kane always says about me. And I think I delegate, again, delicately, these people that will aid in those moments where the text message comes in going, yo, that ain't the move. What a great point. <laughs> I don't know, 
cars are in the afterlife. Like, Trace, what a great point. So sometimes I'm going to do it. But I think for me, it's like I'm directable and I need it. You know, I, I need Kane reminds me of the answer to your question because he's okay. one of those that I go, yo, I don't know. Draymond Green, he's a young brother. Yeah. But Draymond is such a financial guru. Mm hmm. Yeah. Not given the natural abilities, gift wise, that some of the more physically gifted players have, mm -hmm. but yet he's what he is. Mm hmm. That's because it is. Mm hmm. He'll tell, don't invest in that, oh, invest in this. I mean, I, I just try to insert lighthouses and guideposts yeah. along my journey of yeah. Yellow Crack Road. Essentially, what I'm feeling from you, oh, is. Everyone in your life, you understand that we are always teachers and students, and we're always exchanging that role. Exactly. And so it seems like you look at everyone in your life, and you're like, hmm, since you're here, you're here to teach me something. Something. What, it, what, or, what type of branded teacher are you so I know you're the right person to come it. with the right issue? That's it. And I'm very hard when, when, when I've poured into you. I kind of look at it like I realize, Trace, I have an old school call in a new form. Wow. So the old school call makes it where Omari's supposed to go in the room and make a lot of room mm -hmm. for the next generation. But I'm next to people who go, oh, that's a lot of lanes, dog. They just don't know my internal conversation with God. Mm -hmm. He's saying, you're one called like Sammy and them were. Mm. I just put you in this time zone. But you're really built from that era. Right. So do everything. Right. Everybody's in your age group not supposed to do everything, mm -hmm. but you're supposed to do everything. Mm -hmm. I kept trying to ignore that conversation for years. Mm, why? Because you just said it, Trace. Right. It's so much more cozy and comfy yeah, to just easy. walk this yep, way. Yep, 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 yep. I'm as lost as the next man. I'm found <laughs> on a Wednesday and then I'm lost again on the following right. Wednesday. But for some people, loss is an adventure. It is. It's yeah. a great adventure. I don't know if I put food on the table if I'm not lost. I get paid for mm. being lost. Mm. Was Ghost lost? Mm. He never got found. You know what? How do you know when something should be a passion should be pursued as a profession in order to get money, or it should be pursued as a pastime, a hobby? You know, we're in a time now where it feels like, oh, okay, wow, I'm enjoying this. Let me see how I can monetize it. What you trying to do? What are you trying to do, Trace? <laughs> I want everybody to hear this. What What is your goal? I'm asking, Trace. My attention, why are you asking? What is your What's goal? What's the story behind five years your question from now. right here? I'm going to go. Five years from now, where are you? Tracy Garrard, five years from now. Hmm. I do see full-time podcasting. I see a book. I see more audio vision boards. If anyone out there is familiar with what I create, my remix to affirmations. Um, I see also more ease. <laughs> because I have the ability to bring in more team members to help me facilitate my visions. And so I'm not running a marathon every single day when it comes to my projects. And then in general, I'm going to stay being the inquisitive, you know, forever curious, insatiable. Scorpio. Drink Scorpio. I am. <laughs> when you and I are platonically hanging and having a brewski or having a burger, you go, oh, I'm still on it. There it is. That's it. You're still mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. that, and then that's I have a, the accountability because I voiced it to you, so you're always going to bring it up. You said it. You yeah. said vocalization matters. That yeah. was my whole thing. It's like I can think all I want that I should be working with Kevin, but Trace, what if I don't call him? Yeah. What if I don't text him? Yeah. What happens? I tell every kid when they ask, and they don't ask the way you did, I say if you can wake up the following week and you're no longer thinking about that thing, mm that you thought was the thing you wanted to do or be. Mm -hmm. A little kid from Philly, a little kid from Decatur, both color black, dope shit, dope, dope. Mm. So to me, that's purpose. Mm -hmm. Like you, that's, that's, I, Chase, I kept trying to avoid stuff and it kept coming back. Baby steps are better than paralysis, okay? This girl is crazy. <laughs> Thank you, Culture Con, Grey Goose. Make sure you run this back. Culture Con, Grey Goose, we appreciate you. Very humble and, uh, and always appreciate the moment, the stage. And we picked a hellified interviewer. I turned the mic around on her a little bit. She threw it right back at me. <laughs> Damn, Scorpio. I Thank you, Trace. You. I'm very, very honored, very humble. Thank you all. Thank you, fans. Love y'all. Peace.